Good morning. Welcome to Lesson 1, Part 12. The last handful of videos have been explaining contrived concentration. Now we come to spontaneous concentration, and this is huge. Contrived concentration is useful. It's not a panacea, it's not escape, it's not a cure-all, but it is an important preliminary practice. Uh, when I think of preliminary practice, I'm reminded of the phrase of getting my ducks in a row. The need for preliminary practice is found in both the Anapanasati Sutta as well as the Satipatthana Sutta. But in neither of the suttas is contrived concentration uh, taken as a panacea or a cure-all or an escape. It's just a stepping stool, stepping stone to get us to the place where we can practice spontaneous concentration with a modicum of aplomb, with a measure of skill. So what is spontaneous concentration? It's actually very easy. Contrived concentration is picking an arbitrary object and forcing your mind to focus on that. Spontaneous concentration asks the question, what is coming to mind, what is coming to heart, of its own accord. For instance, if you're, if you're making love with your sweetie and your partner is performing one of your favorite sexual favors, you're going to feel pleasure. In fact, you're going to feel pleasure more than any other feeling and you're going to be more aware of the pleasure than anything else in, in, at that moment. That's neither good or bad, it simply is. And so, one of the things we do in sexual tantra is use that awareness of pleasure <coughs> as a tool in the spiritual path. Likewise, if we're suffering, if we're physically suffering and we're feeling physical pain, I got news for you. If you've got a grain of sin in your left eye, you're probably not paying attention to your right pinky or your left kneecap or your right butt cheek. You're probably paying attention to that grain of sand and your left eye and everything else fades away. That's spontaneous awareness, spontaneous concentration. And it would be foolish to ignore that opportunity. So whether we're experiencing profound pleasure or experiencing profound pain, if we feel, if we become aware of anything spontaneously and strongly, we use that. We bring that into the spiritual path. Now, you could say, hey, Lama Jigme, I'm not always feeling rapturous bliss or horrible torment. Sometimes life is just life. Do you got meditations for that? The answer is, yes, I do. Now, we're now going to explore a specific exercise. This will only make sense if you've downloaded the free PDF entitled um, First Quarter's Lesson Texts. Uh, if you're watching this video on, the, on its dedicated YouTube page right below the video, <coughs> you can find a link. Follow that link, download the PDF, open it up, turn to page 4, turn to the second exercise on page 4, and then continue watching this video, or continue listening to the video as you gaze upon the exercise. Now, bear in mind, this is the twelfth part of the first lesson. If you feel the desire to go back to lesson one, part one, that might be very wise. But you're welcome to jump in and, and at least explore this. So the question begins. So we begin on page four, exercise two, with the in-breath, and that's part of the contemplative notation. To the right of that, there's the first of three lines. The first line reads, what and there's a, a line. And then that's basically a fill in the blank. So what? Fill in the blank. You get to jump down to the third line that says, Am I now experiencing? So let's pretend it's something as easy or as simple as 
physical pain. So you get asked, what pain, drop down to the third line, am I now experiencing? Now, on the, at the third line, there's a bracket. And in the bracket it says, am slash is, close bracket. Why is that there? The same reason the next bracket says, I slash fill in the blank, close bracket. These exercises are designed to be flexible and adaptable to virtually every circumstance you could find yourselves in. Now, that's very useful, but at first, it can appear to be rather ungainly. I'd rather sacrifice um, prestige for efficacy. So, for instance, if you were using this to heal someone else, and I don't recommend doing that right off the bat, that's more, you'll be doing that more towards the end of the first quarter, but when we get to that place, for instance, let's pretend I was healing someone of, um, let's pretend I was treating someone for um, congestive heart failure, and they reported the symptom of feeling like their chest was heavy. I would, I would ask, what um, chest heaviness is John now experiencing? And by asking that question, it would create the subconscious momentum to make it effortlessly, to help me to effortlessly tune in, tune in my awareness to John's plight. But nine times out of ten, 99 times out of 100, you're going to be using this on yourself. So, let's pretend you have a physical pain, let's pretend you have, um, I don't know, a sore throat, or that you want, that's not a good example. Maybe a better example would be a sore back. What pain am I now experiencing? And you say, wait, 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 I don't want to notice pain. I want to forget my pain. I want to stick my head in a warm, dark place and forget all about my pain. Well, Acting like a proverbial ostrich might be instinctual, but it's not wise. What we're going to do is use the stuff in our life to benefit spiritually. Now, you could say, well, I don't always have physical pain. Sometimes I have emotional pain. And that takes us to the second line. And the second line is a bracket, and it says, open bracket, anger, comma, fear, comma, sadness, close bracket. So let's talk about that right now. When I was a kid, in art class, they told us there were three primary colors, and that theoretically, by, by combining them, it's po those three primary colors, it's possible to get every color in the spectrum. That's what they told us. What's been my experience, that all our painful emotions boil down to either something in the anger family, or something in the fear family, or something in the sadness family. And they can be mitched, mitched like that, mixed and matched to various degrees to manifest as virtually every and any emotion or uncomfortable emotion you can think of. Now, this is super, super important. There are many religions out there. There are many teachers of religion out there who are in, more into controlling and dominating their students than actually healing and helping them, which is quite horrible. And there are many religions where people run, are taught every day, listen, if you feel bad emotions, you're a bad person. If you feel good emotions, you're a good person. Oh my goodness! you got people running around thinking that if they uh, feel desire, they're a bad person. If they feel fear, they're a bad person. If they feel annoyance, they're a bad person. And it turns them into a neurotic messes. It gets people to lie to others about what they're feeling. It gets people to lie to themselves about what they're feeling. They either stuff and repress what they're feeling, or they completely indulge what they're feeling. Um, it, it's terrible. I found it far more empowering to consider the possibility that what we feel does not determine who we are, but rather what determines who we are is what we do with what we feel. Let me give you an example. See, if that's true, if that's accurate, 
then we can admit to ourselves when we feel anger. We can admit to ourselves when we feel scared. We can admit to ourselves when we feel sad. And it doesn't make us spiritual failures. Our emotions are not spiritual indictments. For instance, many times, especially in fundamentalist sex, people walk around saying, I'm furious. Oh, did I say furious? I meant angry. Oh, wait, did I say angry? No, I'm not really angry. I'm annoyed. Did I say annoyed? I meant Myth. Did I say myth? I meant amused, because I'm above such things as anger. Bullshit. So, what I invite my students to do is explore the possibility that it doesn't matter whether you're full, you're full of rage or mild annoyance. It's anger. It doesn't matter if you're full of abject terror or subtle anxiety. It's fear. It doesn't matter if you're feeling despair or a little teeny bit blue. It's sadness. And life is much more workable. If instead of minimizing, justifying, rationalizing, and excusing our emotions, or berating or punishing ourselves for having emotions, we simply look at our emotions, and then bring them the path. And what we'll be doing in further videos of this lesson is learn how to deconstruct it and let go of it. But you can't let go of it and deconstruct it until first you're aware of its presence. It's kind of like uh, archery. You can't hit a target unless you first aim at it. <laughs> so what we're doing now is aiming at the target. So you'll find when it comes to negative or unpleasant or difficult emotions, nine tens out of ten, anger or fear or sadness will cover what you're feeling. If it doesn't, then take whatever word you feel describes what you feel and stick in the blank. So for instance, what anger am I now experiencing? What fear am I now experiencing? What sadness am I now experiencing? And remember... These are rhetorical questions. We ask the question, and then we relax into the verbal recitation of the mantra. Now, I mentioned before, we don't always feel a rapturous pleasure or uh, suffering and torment. Sometimes we just feel neutral emotions. That takes us to the first line. What breathing am I now experiencing? What action am I now experiencing, i.e. walking, or sitting, or standing? What feeling am I now experiencing? That could be emotional, or that could be, you know, corporeal, you know. Uh, what sound am I now experiencing? What side am I now experiencing? What thought am I now experiencing? What memory am I now experiencing? You know, what desire am I now experiencing? What dread am I now experiencing? So you get the basic idea. Whatever's most real to us in the moment, instead of fighting its energy, we capture that energy and use it to increase our awareness. Now let's turn our attention back to the second line. We've already explored the, the set of anger, fear, and sadness. Set just to the right of that is open bracket, body, mind, or me, close bracket. Once again, if you're not experiencing pleasure or pain and you're just, you know, practicing in a neutral sense, you could ask, what body am I now experiencing? You know, what mind am I now experiencing? What sense of me am I now experiencing? But nine times out of ten, we, folk, we suffer. Suffering drives us to the spiritual path. <coughs> just like hunger uh, drives us to eat and thirst drives us to drink. Nine times out of ten, you'll be working with unpleasant emotions. Now, I mentioned a few moments ago, these are rhetorical questions. We ask the question on the in-breath. We relax on the out-breath. And you'll notice in this, on the fourth line, the mantra is different than it was in the first exercise. The mantra here is, Om Mani Padme Hum. We're going to explore that in our next lesson. What have you learned today? You've been reminded of the difference uh, between... It's contrived concentration and spontaneous concentration. You've learned 
the core practices, nine times out of ten, you'll be working with yucky emotions, but not always. Sometimes you're working with yucky physical sensations, sometimes you're working with neutral sensations, sometimes with pleasure. Um, and you've been reminded that this is rhetorical work. Next video, we're going to play with the six syllable mantra. That's really cool. So, before you go, I'm going to remind you to click the subscribe button and then pull your cursor away and hover it back over the subscribe button and another box will open up and you'll be given an opportunity to check an, uh, a request to receive email notifications every time I put up another video, which is smart. I thank you for your time and your kind attention. May you and yours be healthy and happy. Oh, money put me whom. Uh, below the video, you'll also find a link to register for the next series of weekly webinars. The Thursday series begins September 6th. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.